Hi, welcome and thank you for joining today to watch Blended Learning with Courseware. My name is Jocelyn and I am an implementation specialist here at Admentum. I began over in our support department as a customer service representative and after about a year I transitioned into my current role that implementation specialist role. Prior to joining Admentum, I spent a year in early childhood education and I became certified to teach within the state of Texas. So let's talk a little bit about our agenda today. Today we're going to go over courseware, just in general, what it is, what it does, why we like it. We're going to talk about blended learning. We're going to talk about our Flix classroom model and we are going to spend most of our time on flipped classrooms. Uh, we are going to go briefly over flex models and our remote classroom as well. So Edmentum's courseware is a standards-based online learning program grounded in a tradition of solid research and applied innovation. What that means is we develop rigorous and relevant curriculum that challenges your students with a 21st century approach. Um, it's designed to engage them with interactive, media-rich content. So whether your students are falling behind at grade level or advanced, it's designed to help you accommodate their unique needs in an environment which they will thrive. Edmentum's courseware can be used in a lab setting or, as we talk about today, a blended model in which online courses supplement the traditional classroom or through a completely virtual experience, such as the remote model. So let's talk a little bit about blended learning. So blended learning can be courses that integrate online activities and face-to-face -face learning. That's probably the simplest sentence there. It also includes courses that are taught both in the classroom and at a distance, and learning is delivered at least in part by technology. Blended learning requires both. It requires a teacher and it requires technology. So if students are learning entirely online, that's not blended learning, that's online learning. Um, and if students are learning entirely in a classroom, that's also not blended learning. Instruction at some point has to be delivered by technology in order for it to be considered blended learning. Um, that doesn't mean that the other models are invalid or anything. That's just what the definition of blended learning is and what we are going to be talking about as we go through today. So, before we go into our different models, let's talk a little bit about the comparison. Now, most classrooms have moved away from this traditional lecture-based model. We kind of understand that it's not necessarily what works best for the student, but it is valuable as a comparison. So, traditional lecture-based learning typically has a teacher at the front of the classroom and students are in rows receiving whole group instruction. Traditional classrooms thus have some limited opportunities. Um, it is limited in its opportunity to assess students other than post-assessment and thus little opportunity for intervention or differentiation. Again, most classrooms have moved away from this model. You may see it at the higher education levels when students are a little bit more prepared for something like this but it does require a lot of maturity to get the most out of this model. So before class, students may do some reading to prepare for class and the teacher has prepared a lecture. During class, teacher lectures on the material and students may complete some practice. And after class, the teacher is typically unavailable or maybe just available for a short time and students do homework to apply that learning. One of the big problems that we run into with traditional lecture-based learning, especially again at those younger grade levels with less maturity, is that we spend our classroom time on these lower levels of the pyramid, understanding, um, remembering, and applying. And then we send them home and we hope that they can do the hard part on their own, the analyzing, evaluating, creating, and we kind of have to cross our fingers and hope that circumstances at home allow for these depths of knowledge to be reached. This is obviously not the ideal situation. We really want students to get the most out of their classroom time. We want them to get the most while they have somebody with the knowledge and expertise around to guide them into these higher levels of knowledge. So let's talk about flipped classroom. 
like I said, I'm going to be spending the most of our time today on flipped classrooms because out of everything I talked about today, this is the one that you can go in and you can adjust your lesson plans and you can do tomorrow if you would like. A flipped classroom is an instructional strategy and a type of blended learning that reverses the traditional learning environment by delivering instructional content, often online, outside of the classroom. It moves activities, including those that may have traditionally been considered homework, into the classroom. Um, most classrooms that do a flip classroom do kind of a mixed flip, like some of the content will be delivered in class and some will be delivered at home, just depending on how difficult the material might be. And that's totally fine. That's probably ideal. Um, some things are difficult to understand to get even to that initial bit of knowledge. So you do need some classroom time. Um, some classrooms are a true flip. All lesson materials are viewed outside of the classroom and um, all homework, all things that would be considered homework are done in class. Both of these are valid. It's whatever works best for your classroom. You know your students better than I do. You know what's gonna work better than I do. Um, do keep in mind that anytime you start integrating a model, it is going to take you some time to learn what works best. I'm sure everybody here is either a first year teacher or remembers what it's like to be a first year teacher. And whenever you integrate some sort of new model, you're going to feel a little bit like a first year teacher again. Um, but don't worry, just like you were when you were a first year teacher, you're going to learn to adapt, you're going to learn to improvise, you're going to learn what works best for you and for your students. So the basic part of a flipped classroom is that before class, students have viewed these lesson materials outside of the classroom, uh, maybe using courseware. And the teacher has a prepared to assist in application. Before class, students may complete a short assignment or quiz to ensure understanding. Um, some people also like to do this at the start of class as a short little formative assessment. And during class, students apply knowledge in practice work and students assist, or sorry, and teachers assist the students in practice. So let's talk about integrating courseware here. Before class, if you are using a flipped model with courseware, you may have the students view this tutorial outside of class time. And you may have even had them take this mastery test outside of class. Now, personally, my recommendation here is, of course, have those students do the tutorial. If you do have them do the mastery test outside of class, this is a great way to use it as a formative assessment so that you immediately know where your students are at, how well they understood what they got out of that tutorial, so you can uh, kind of figure out where you need to start. So I recommend having students just take that mastery test one time. You have the option to set that when you create your courses. You can also, Go ahead and have them take it as many times as they like to make sure that they really get that the most that they can out of the classroom. Again, this is one of those things. There's some flexibility. It's what works best for you and your student. So what you choose to do in your classroom at this point is entirely up to you. And it really depends on a number of factors such as the subject or the topic or the time you have in class. There are some suggestions on this slide, but please don't feel like you need to do exactly these things. This is your time. Flipping your classroom allows you to be creative and take feedback from your students as to which direction you should go to really make sort of a collaborative classroom. Many teachers do like to begin with a short recap of what the students went over online just to refresh their memories, but you may not want to spend a lot of time lecturing because that's the whole point of flipping your classroom, to open up class time to maximize interactions and learning time. This is also a fantastic way to open up room for formative assessment and differentiation based on data that you may have gotten from that pre-assessment, maybe the mastery test. Um, some students that flip with courseware use the classroom time to assist with the mastery test specifically. Others may use the time to have a discussion on the material or do a project that engages learning styles outside of audio or visual or demonstrate the material with some lab time. So with all of that said, Let's take another look at this chart. 
in a flipped classroom, we see that the roles have flipped as well. Students are doing the easy part at home, and then they have your assistance and your knowledge and your guidance of the subject to take them to these deeper levels of understanding. If a flipped classroom is just turning the traditional model upside down, a flex model is more like beating it up in a back alley and scrapping it for parts. It requires a fundamental change across the board, and I like to imagine that we'll kind of see a huge shift towards this model and similar models as standards like ESSA potentially prompt a move away from the standard grade level system where every student is expected to progress at the same rate. We know that that doesn't happen. That's why we've come up with things like differentiation. Flex Classroom is a very student-first approach to learning and is great in populations where students have a lot of IEPs, uh, 504 plans. It really gets you as close to completely individualizing a student's learning as you can outside of a one-on-one -on -one or homeschool environment. That being said, this model is a huge, huge transition for everyone involved and everyone needs to be on board, students, teachers, administrators. Most flex models were born as a solution to non-consumption, focused initially on dropouts, credit recovery, and summer school, alternative schools, things like that. Students who may have otherwise seen no instruction. The role of the teacher, of course, significantly changes when implementing a flex model. Students have so much autonomy when working in a flex model, so instead of delivering instruction to whole groups, teachers spend most of their time providing face-to-face -face tutoring, guidance, and enrichment to support online lessons. So what you'll have here is students in this study and collaborative space with a teacher, maybe also some paraprofessionals hanging out, um, and students will be going through their courses online and they'll have someone available to help them as they go through. So let's take a look one more time at our model over here. Flex models offer, as their name implies, some more flexibility. So we may see a little bit more wiggliness between these two, but we can still see that the individual part is going to be like the flipped classroom. It's going to be this remembering, understanding, applying, more or less. And the analyzing, evaluating, and creating stages, those are designed as a part of our breakout rooms and labs. We are looking for deeper depths of knowledge when we pull the students aside to work with us in that flex model. So the last thing that I want to talk about today is remote learning. So remote learning differs uh, pretty radically from our other models, the flipped model and the flex model, because it's almost entirely off-site. So that process off-site can be synchronous, where teachers and students are all online at the same time, sort of as a virtual classroom, or asynchronous, where students are working at their own pace and at their own convenience. The students and the teachers will communicate using technology most of the time. Uh, it is important that the teacher is available to work with the students when we're using this remote model. The advantages to this is that they are super low cost to implement, they're very flexible, and they're super accessible to students. Once again, this is kind of something that we typically see offered in the face of non-consumption. We see it amongst older students, college students, uh, dropouts, homeschool students, typically older students with a little bit more maturity and discipline because this model does require a little bit of maturity and discipline on the student's part. Um, there's not a lot of opportunities for accountability. So we wanna take a look at this model one more time. And the reason that it is so important that teachers be accessible is because all of this is done at home. So these lower depths of knowledge, the remembering, the understanding, and applying, and this higher part, the analyzing, the evaluating, and the creating, this is all done at home. So we wanna make sure that students really have the ability to reach out to their teachers and get what they need out of their own programs when we're doing these remote models. Now, one of the way that, that courseware really supports these remote models and I'm going to have to pull this up. There we go, right here, is our collab stations. 
So let's take a really quick look at these. We have kind of our virtual whiteboard. This is great for that virtual classroom model, right? And we can have all of our students over here and they can be chatting as we go through. We can have these group discussions. We can come here, we can watch some videos together and have discussions as we go through. We can even share documents right there. So this is kind of a really great virtual classroom tool that Courseware has to help support their courses. Of course, Courseware, will also be great as far as delivering the instructional material and getting some of those grades in. So at this point, we would usually have a Q&A, but I did create this just to be recorded. If you do end up having any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I can be found at implementation specialist at inventum.com, uh, jocelyn.thompson at inventum.com, or 214-294-9972. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions about this webinar or about courseware. If you have any technical issues, please feel free to reach out to our support people. Thank you so much for joining me today, for taking the time to watch this. You have a wonderful rest of your day.